and this is how she called the police. Welcome back or welcome if you're new to this channel. Today we're gonna dive into part two of working for Emirates, uh, coming through the good and the bad. If you didn't do it, I'm going to invite you to watch part one that I'm going to link somewhere here. And I want to remind you that if you want to succeed the Emirates Assessment Day, I have created the perfect guide on YouTube, but also the most perfect guide in ebook called How to Become Cabin Crew in the New Self Era. In this guide, you can find more than eight CV templates. You can find more than 30 uh, English tests that are perfectly crafted for the Emirates Assessment Day. So they actually represent what's going to be asked. Also more than 20 scenarios for the group assessments, the first and the second one, and more than 30 final interview questions that you can practice with so that you can arrive very, very prepared to the Emirates Assessment Day. How to become a cabin crew in the new self era for me, it's very special because I I am the creator of the new self era and it's a concept that helps your mindset to shift so that you can reach your goals or create your dream reality in this book not only i put the technical practice that you need for the Emirates Assessment Day, but I also put what you actually need, which is the strength of your mindset. And here you can find the tips and tricks on how to train your mindset and much more. So we're going to talk about scars, tattoos, makeup, all your questions are answered in this ebook. But if you still think that there are some questions that are unanswered, you have the possibility to book with me a Calendly and I'm gonna answer all of your questions and also review your CV. So if you wanna get to the job of your dreams, don't wait any longer, download the ebook and the link will be in the description of this video. Okay, let's go. Sit down or lay down, take your favorite tea or coffee or drink because I have crazy stories here the good and the bad of working for emirates cabin crew part two okay last time when i have spoken about uh, my friends uh, working for emirates cabin crew once again i want to remind that uh, i'm gonna make up the names because i cannot disclose their identities otherwise the company can fire them you know when you once you work for Emirates Cabin Crew, you cannot go around and tell like the private stories or secrets or complain because there are so many applicants every day. And uh, one of the risks uh, of working for this company is that you are easily replaceable. So it's very important that I keep their identity hidden, but at least they give me all the juicy, the spicy stuff of what's happening in uh, their jobs. I'm going to keep the name of Alina as I did last time. I told you that one of the best things of working for Emirates Cabin Crew is the travel. So Alina is literally uh, traveling back to back. And the last time she went to New Zealand and that was like her dream, but something happened on the flight to new zealand let's be honest it was a long flight i think it was 13 hours from the destination she flew from and uh, what happened is that she was you know doing her customer service uh, tasks uh, serving customers uh, but there was one particular customer that really, really um, got a bit into her. And I'm going to explain you how. If you decide to become a cabin crew and you succeed and you become Emirates cabin crew, let me tell you something very important is that you will never be bored. But it could be positive or negative. Like you, you will be going on a roller coaster of emotions, okay? That's how they describe it to me. One of the best perks of working as cabin crew is the fact that you travel a lot, like literally every day. One day you are in Australia, the second day you're in India, and the third day you are in Morocco. So you can literally just go around the globe in a click. So Alina was operating this flight going to New Zealand, and it was pretty long because the point of departure was a bit far so it was around 13 hours of flight and uh, sh she remembers that uh, when she was uh, operating this flight everything was fine she was serving customers uh, she gave them lunch uh, dinner breakfast and so on but there was this one particular customer that happens to be a bit too into her let me explain if you're working in hospitality especially emirates cabin crew you need to respect a certain standard so you need to really provide the best 
customer service experience you could ever do. You need to keep it professional, but at the same time, you need to make uh, uh, customers feel as much comfortable as possible. And on this flight uh, going to New Zealand, there was uh, this customer that I think took it, took this whole customer service experience a bit too hard because uh, he thought that the hostesses were flirting with him when it's just their job to be as friendly as possible, as much friendly as possible, to be professional, to make the customer comfortable and so on. So Alina was serving this passenger, but she noticed that every time she was walking on the island, he would like literally fix her. He, he would stare at her like, like this, okay? And she, um, she gave him the benefit of the doubt as in that she didn't really worry too much about it. Uh, once again, I remind you, my friend is so beautiful. She's gorgeous. So I don't blame this passenger. However, it's a bit creepy to do that. I mean, I understand that you can stare at someone because they're pretty, but to stare like for the whole 13 hours is a bit too much. Anyways, she was serving customers and one of these customers was this man. Let's call him John. She was serving John and every time she was giving him something like a coffee, he would try and touch her hand. So uh, let's pretend that, that she's giving the coffee. He would try to like touch her hand and she would be a bit freaked out. Anyways, all good on the flight. They land and, you know, first uh, the, all the passengers uh, uh, get off the plane and they go and get their luggage and then the cabin crew gets off the plane. Okay. So what happens is John, the man that was a bit creepy, he stays on the plane until everyone gets off and then he gets off. And it was a bit odd because he had like almost the first places in economy class where you can easily get off the plane. And he waited until everyone got off and then he went to the terminal. He stayed a bit outside and he didn't go and pick up his luggage or he didn't go out of the terminal. He waited until all cabin crew came along and then Lena saw him and she was like, okay, maybe this is a little bit creepy. I don't understand why this man is still around, but okay, maybe I'm just tired. Also, I forgot to tell you how this man looked like. He was in his forties. He had a pretty nice watch on his wrist. He was a good looking man, seemed to have a lot of money, but that's all Alina knew and uh, she didn't really care. As you know, as cabin crew, you earn a pretty good money, so you don't really need a passenger to give you money or something. Alina arrives at the hotel, she checks in, she arrives, she puts her luggage down and she takes a shower and then she's like, okay, I'm hungry, I'm gonna order some food. She gives a look at the menu and she decides to get a cheeseburger. Um, nothing fancy, you know, just a cheeseburger and relax in the room. So she calls room service and she's like, okay, I would like to order a cheeseburger. So why am I highlighting this? It's because plot twist is coming soon. She's like, yeah, I would like a cheeseburger. Um, yeah, with some water, extra water because she was dehydrated a little bit. And that's it. And she, the, the room service was like, okay, no problem. We will be there in 15 minutes. Then room service arrives at her room and when she opens the door, you know, like it's in like in the movies when you have like the butler come in with those uh, gray trays where you open and you have like roasted chicken, a steak, vegetables and stuff like that. So there was a butler who went to her room and he brought her like gourmet food, fancy food that she didn't order. And she's like, um, I'm sorry, sir, but I think there is a mistake here. I didn't order any, <laughs> any of this food. And the man is like, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I am here with the customer and she didn't order his food. She thinks it's a mistake. And they say, is it room 151, which was uh, her room? And she was like, yes, this is my room, but I ordered a cheeseburger. I didn't order all of this. And besides, I don't think I could afford it because let me tell you, cabin crew has an allowance to get uh, food when they are into in a destination 
but of course they don't get like thousands of euros the meal that she had there in front of her it was worth uh, probably 500 euros so that's why she was like i didn't order this i don't know what's going on so i mean why not but i'm not gonna pay for it and so the reception answers uh, uh to the butler over the walkie-talkie uh, that um mr lennon or something i guess so they come out with a fancy last name order the food for the cabin crew lady staying in that room and my friend was like so alina was like okay this is creepy first of all how does this person know in which room i am staying and secondly why did this person order 500 euros worth of food for me i'm here alone so i'm not gonna even eat it and that was shocking for me it was super intriguing as a story because i was like oh first of all how did he find her room and secondly it sounds like a movie it sounds like a movie and I was like, it's not that bad. <laughs> but at the same time, for safety reasons, it was a bit creepy. It was a bit awkward. She was there standing in front of this beautiful tray full of fancy food, gourmet food. She was starving, to be honest, and she was exhausted. So she didn't want to deal with this whole bullshit <laughs> for too long. So what she said was like, Okay, you know what? Fine, just leave it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank the person who gave me this food. But uh, let me tell you, I don't know anyone here in New Zealand. I'm just working as cabin crew for Emirates and tomorrow I'll have my flight back to Dubai. But bear in mind, I don't know anyone. So don't give any of my personal details to anyone. The butler answered, yes, I'm sorry, miss. I apologize. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we're going to leave the tray and we're going to thank the person who sent this for you. Okay, so far so good. Alina was a bit freaked out though, because yes, it's very nice to receive this beautiful tray full of fancy food. But at the same time, she didn't ask anyone and she didn't, knew, she didn't know anyone in New Zealand. So why would she receive all of this? But okay, she accepted it. She went inside the room with it. She started eating. She couldn't even finish because it was so much food. When she landed, it was around 12 p.m., okay? So she went in her room. She slept five hours, no matter, uh, despite the jet lag, because she was exhausted. And around five, six o'clock, she decides to join other cabin crew because they have groups uh, for uh, different uh, flights for different roasters so they try to organize them a bit in advance so that it's possible to hang out uh, if uh, the people wish to do so also bear in mind that uh, cabin crew working for emirates party a lot party so much myself when i went to singapore i met uh, cabin crew in brussels in italy i mean i <laughs> you can meet emirates cabin crew everywhere they party so much and that's why they end up uh, exhausted all the time because uh, they want to visit, they have this FOMO, but they don't rest enough, okay? But Alina, she knows that she's going to visit different countries multiple times, so she takes it easy, step by step. She visits a little bit of New Zealand one day, then when she goes again, she visits the other side and so on. So basically... Cabin crew party a lot, but it's very important to first take care of your physical health. Because if you don't sleep, you're going to take your brain to exhaustion. Exhaustion, this word is difficult. And you're going to end up either quitting your job or in a hospital. Because really, you know how much I love science and to be well mentally you need to be well physically and if you have this sleep deprivation you're not gonna be able to be happy or to enjoy anything no matter how much sun dubai has or how many activities or how much money you have in your bank account you're gonna end up depressed so whenever it happens that you become cabin crew please always prioritize your sleep your skincare your health over parties.
closed parentheses. So she decides to join uh, other people, uh, other cabin crew to this party in New Zealand, first for like a big dinner and then for a party because the flight the next day was at 3 p.m. anyways. So she was lucky enough to have some time to rest. So she goes, she uh, puts makeup, she dresses up, she's super fancy, she's glowing, she's beautiful, stunning. So she decides to go out. She meets her friends. They had sushi that night and it was delicious. Delicious. So Alina and her friends, after having dinner, they had sushi from what she told me. And she told me that in New Zealand is delicious. It's the best thing she's she has ever eaten apparently so i need to try this and you need to try it too she decides to not drink that night because she was exhausted and also to go home around 1 a.m so she uh, calls a cab and she heads back to the hotel when she goes upstairs to her room under the door of uh, the room she finds a letter from the hotel with the hotel imprint and in this letter there was written the following hi i have seen you on flight number x okay number 111 and i find you very stunning i have been at the same place as you did tonight where they were playing this kind of music and your eyes were like glowing in the middle of the darkness, no matter the lights, no matter all the lights. And among all the noise of the club, I only could hear your melodic voice. Because at that point, <laughs> Lena was like, okay, this is too much. This is too much. She closed, the, uh, she locked the door of her room and she was like, okay, someone literally stalked her in the club. This person that sent her the food also stalked. So what she did is to call reception, let reception know that uh, she had this letter stating where she was that night and reception did the necessary. So first of all, they called the police um she went downstairs she reported what happened to the police and she described the man that was harassing her pretty much however the hotel could not give the information of this man's room because he was staying at the same hotel as Elena so the hotel decided to give her another room so they helped her uh pack and i mean put all the luggage and all the stuff in the other room and they put extra security outside of the door so they made sure that uh, some members of the staff uh, would uh, check on the aisle and that she had all the lockers on until the next day also that night Alina texted the friends she was with the cabin crew she was with luckily that night she had a really nice group because um, one of the good or bad things about working for Emirates is that you don't work always for the same people. You could get attached to someone, but then the next flight you're working with other people. There are more than 20,000 people working for Emirates uh, in cabin crew. So it's difficult to catch always the same person. And also she tells me that the bad thing one of the worst things of working for this airline is that uh, most of the colleagues, cabin crew colleagues, are nasty and they do nasty stuff to uh, other people working like them. But this is going to be something for the next video so that I don't disperse too much. She calls someone from uh, the group that she hang out with uh, that night. Likely there was one of her colleagues that was staying at the hotel that went to sleep with her that night and they went to the airport together the next day Alina anyways filed the report but she didn't want to make it too big because Emirates doesn't like drama so she preferred to not push it further because she was scared that this customer would report her to Emirates 
and for Emirates, the customer is always right. Okay, so the next day at 3 p.m., she had her flight, she flew back to Dubai. There was no, um, there was no trace of this man, luckily, but it was a bit creepy. And I know this happens quite a lot. I know this TikToker, um, she works for Emirates Cabin Crew and she always posts where she goes. And she also posted her story of being stalked in the hotel. So it's something that could happen if you ever uh, start working for Emirates. I hope it doesn't happen to you. Just be careful because I know you're just doing your job, but some people don't take it uh, seriously or they take it too seriously thinking that you're flirting with them or uh, I don't know, um, that you're being friendly with them. So you want something from them. So this story went great, but she was being stalked pretty much. And uh, it happens quite often. Let's be honest. I'm not done though. In part three, I'm going to tell you what nasty shit colleagues do in Emirates cabin crew to other colleagues. And Alina doesn't understand why. She told me about stories that she heard within the company but also stuff that happened to her okay so i'm gonna tell you in part three don't forget to subscribe like and share this video and see you next time thank you so much bye